Something we often overlook is how we can make use of all our senses when running a D&D game. Today I want to talk to you specifically about using sound and music effectively in your games, as well as some of the pitfalls and traps you'll want to avoid while trying to do so. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Dungeon Mastery. I am your host Josiah, also known as Dungeon Dad, and today we're going to be talking about using sound in your D&D game. When it comes to using music or ambient sound in tabletop games, people tend to have a lot of varying opinions about this. I've talked to people who have never even considered doing this, or who have tried it and found that it's not for them, and other people who do this and won't run a game without it. And just for clarification, when I talk about using music in D&D, what I mean is basically just having a speaker set up somewhere around the game table that is just playing some soft music in the background that can kind of add to the mood of whatever's happening and the moment in your game. To give you an example of what I mean, take the following bit of narration for instance. We'll go through it once and then we'll go through it again with some sound in the background and you'll be able to see the difference, or hear the difference rather. A great sundering rock can be heard from the depths of the mountain, echoing through the entire throne room. The orcs, broken and with their leader slain, begin to panic. They rush for the exit, practically falling over one another as they do so. Orcish screams, followed by crimson firelight, begin to creep their way up from the crude staircase at the end of the hallway. The dragon, a Shardalon, has been freed from its 1000 year slumber. The orcish shaman, who once stood by the king's side, smiles a twisted grin as the flames erupt from below and reduce him to ashes. Roll initiative. That's pretty standard stuff for the setup with a powerful dragon encounter that's kind of meant to be the end boss of an area. This is a real encounter, by the way, that I actually ran a few months back. But let's observe that same bit of setup, but I'll throw in the background music that I used when I actually ran this game, and we'll see if it makes that much of a difference. A great sundering rock can be heard from the depths of the mountain, echoing through the entire throne room. The orcs, broken and with their leader slain, begin to panic. They rush for the exit, practically falling over one another as they do so. Orcish screams, followed by crimson firelight, begin to creep their way up from the crude staircase at the end of the hallway. The dragon, a Shardalon, has been freed from its 1000 year slumber. The orcish shaman, who once stood by the king's side, smiles a twisted grin as the flames erupt from below and reduce him to ashes. Roll initiative. Now of course this is all totally subjective, but personally I like the touch of tension that the music adds. But a common misconception when it comes to using music in D&D is that it's not used just for battle or just for tense moments. Any of you who watch Critical Role and see how they make use of music on that show will know what I mean by this. Sound can be used to punctuate an emotional moment or you can use an ambient track of townsfolk going about their daily business to weave a tapestry in the background of sound that the players will hear as their characters are walking through the main area of a city. It can even make travel a little bit more interesting, and it just adds that extra hint of adventure of the party leaving town and going back out into the wilderness. I know nothing gets me in the mood to sail the nine seas like a good old shanty. And music isn't the only thing at your disposal here. There are tons of ambient tracks out there you can use for when your players enter a blacksmith shop or are exploring an old abandoned mine. Ambient sounds can be really nice to just add to a scene and make you really feel like you're in it. Using the example of the blacksmith shop, there's nothing quite as immersive as when you're talking about what your characters are doing and interacting with the characters that are in the smithy, while you can hear the sound of someone pounding away on an anvil and someone putting a hot sword into a barrel of water to cool it down, all the stuff you would expect to hear when you're actually in a blacksmith shop. If you're not already familiar with this website, Tabletop Audio is an excellent source for these types of ambient tracks. It's all 100% free, you can go on the website and just play them straight from your browser or download them if you want to, you don't have to sign up or anything, you just click it and you're there. I'll leave a link to that in the description below as well for those of you who are curious and want to check that out, but it's definitely worth your time if you plan on using any type of ambient tracks in the background of your games. These ambient track loops, whether they're from Tabletop Audio or anywhere else really, or if, even if you've created them yourself, can really help add to the sense of exploring a musty dungeon that hasn't been disturbed for a thousand years. Another fun use for music in your game is to let all of your characters choose a theme song. It can be really whatever, something serious, something funny, but something that they feel represents their character. It can be a neat tool for you to use as a dungeon master just to keep this track in your back pocket on your D&D playlist or however you have it set up. 
And then when that player does something really intense or epic or it just feels appropriate and you put on that character's theme song, it just has the potential to elevate that moment a little bit and it engages your players on another level with what you're actually doing to prepare your games as well, which is always a good thing. Now with all that said, there are totally traps that are pretty easy to fall into that you might not even realize you're falling into when you're setting up and preparing to add sound to your game. The first piece of advice I would give is don't worry about finding the perfect song for every single encounter. And there's nothing wrong with picking out a playlist ahead of time with songs that you feel would be appropriate or backtracks that you feel would be appropriate for certain areas. But the worst thing you could do here is take time away from the game itself to be scrolling through playlists or whatever and trying to find that specific song. Generally what I do here is I just make specific playlists for different areas or situations and then just play a random song off of that so that I'm not looking for a specific song. It's just, oh, we're entering battle. I'll put on battle music. Oh, we're going into a dungeon. What kind of dungeon is it underground? Okay, underground dungeon music. Like it just helps to have those playlists set up ahead of time. And when it comes to sound effects, my biggest piece of advice here is just keep it simple. If you want to include those ambient loops, just look for pre-made ones online and find some that you like and keep them in your library. And don't worry too much about finding every specific sound effect for every possible situation that might arise. In theory, it's really cool to have specific sound effects for specific things that might happen in battle or during roleplay, but it can really slow down the game if you're, again, looking through a huge list of sound effects to try to find that one that you thought would be good for the situation. Another thing to avoid here, and this ultimately comes down to the personal taste of you and your group, but try not to have your music be too loud and overpowering. The focus of your game still should be around the table and the players and what's happening there. You're simply adding in that layer of sound to be used as a nice ambient backtrack to elevate what's happening at the table, but not overshadow it. So volume and the type of music that you're selecting for your playlist should definitely be something that you want to keep in mind when you're preparing something like this ahead of time. Even if it's just something that has like Latin lyrics or something that no one's going to be able to understand the words of at your table, Lyrics are still distracting because your ear just naturally wants to hear that and try to figure out what those people are saying. So lyrics are definitely something you want to try to avoid, at least in my personal experience. But all in all, I think that music and sound effects like this can really elevate Dungeons and Dragons to another level, and I'm a huge advocate for using them in your game. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say in this video today. Uh, let me know if you guys use sound effects or music in your games at home and some tactics you might employ and ways that you use that to try to make things a bit more interesting. As always, if you want to get a hold of me on Twitter, Discord, whatever, all that stuff is in the description below, as is my Patreon link. Thank you guys so much for all the support you offer me both there and everywhere else. I seriously couldn't do this without you. And most of all, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video. Till then.